Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I'm sure you read the title already, so you know what's gonna be happening. But um, anyways, I'm going to be recreating these two type of posters, I'd say, that I made um, yesterday and the day before. Um, and yeah, here are some examples. I'm sure I'm showing on screen right now. Pretty much, they're not too hard to make. Um, but the tutorial is going to be more focused on the effects that are used in Photoshop to make it look like that. So in terms of 3D text, you can do this all in Photoshop, but for the 3D, I really recommend you use a program like Blender or Cinema 4D. Um, because it'll just make it go so much quicker and you'll save tons of time. And plus, 3D is cool and you can make cool stuff out of it later. So it's always nice to go ahead and start learning. Um, just a disclaimer. Uh, the way I make these obviously differs from how someone else would do it and might be doing things the wrong way or in a destructive manner, but, you know, it's the final, it's the final output that counts. So, um, yeah. Anyways, if you are following with me on Cinema 4D, I, you can just watch this, but if you're gonna, if you just want to see how I worked it on Photoshop, you can skip to the time that I'm going to put up on the screen right now. So, first we are going to need the text. So I'm going to go to MoGraph, Mo Text, and I'm going to type in, now just example, not typing, I'm just going to type in example text. And the font that I like is a pretty traditional one like this, a sheriff font, traditional sheriff. Um, I'm going to expand it a bit. I want it to have somewhat nice of a thickness. And then we're also going to need a camera. So I'm going to put the camera down. Um, the camera, we're down here at the rotation. We're going to make everything zero. And for the position, we're also going to make everything zero. Then we're going to hit apply. So the camera is now looking here. Um, if you use the middle mouse button, which is your scroller you push down on it you can see different angles which is super useful for aligning so we're just going to move this in here um, doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go make sure that it's centered so that when we click on camera we can see the full text perfect so Next step is to have each letter sort of be their own little thing, as if they're sort of falling down as I showed in the examples. So, what to do is that you select the text and then click C on your keyboard in Cinema 4D, and what it'll do is it'll make each object, each letter a separate object, extrudable object, and then with that, you can go through each object and you can adjust it however you see fit. And so I'm going to go through, I've actually already done this, but basically you adjust this however you see fit and you go through the scale, position, movement, rotate, what example, whatever. You'll go through all of it, give a cool, get a cool looking effect. Um, for whatever you see on screen right now that I've put up, that was for my last one. And once you're there, then we're gonna next focus on the lighting. So, for the lighting, you're gonna need an infinite light source, which will be sort of like, we want that to be the main focus of the light source in this sort of void scene that we're creating. And then we're also gonna need some general lighting around the text, just so we can get um, light on every part of the text. Because when we're gonna later edit this in Photoshop, we don't want any pure black parts because we're not going to be able to edit those and it's just going to show up as a black square in Photoshop and it's not going to be very cool to work with. So, I'm going to click create, we're going to go to light, I'm going to click infinite light. So, this light shows up here. It doesn't matter where you put the infinite light because the idea behind it is that it comes infinitely all around. But you can see those parts right here, those are pure black, so those won't work. So, we're just going to rotate it ever so slightly like that just to give it sort of a natural light form and then we're also gonna work with a normal light 
but we are going to use the array so we can have it go around in a circle. So, if we put the normal light right below the text using our multiple viewpoints right here, and then we head into, click this array, we'll put it in right here, we drag our infinite light, the other light, down into there, then you can see we have a light circle right here. So we want to make sure that that array is under the text to where we want it. Next, we can make this radius much bigger. We need to surround the whole text. So I'm going to say around somewhere, maybe a thousand. Oops, that's 100. Thousand, and then there's a few gaps. We'll just double this. We'll make 14 of them. And now the issue is this works, but we've got, if you look at it, this looks way too bright because we have 14 of these at 100% intensity. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this to around 4. So it adds up to around 100. I don't know what the math is behind that. So next for the infinite light, we're going to make sure that we have a shadow type. We're just going to make it soft shadows. So now if we look at that, we still got the main light going front, but then every bit around it is still lit up. So once you have this part ready, head into the... Make sure that you're viewing through your camera by clicking this little button. Head into your render settings. Under output, change this to the size that you want to work in. So, for the Photoshop one, what we're going to be working in is 1920 by 1080. Oops. Photoshop is in my way. 1080. At a resolution of 300 dpi. Next, um, we're going to go to the save here, we're going to select alpha channel so that this render is basically, it'll export with a uh, transparent background. The format, we'll just keep it as a PNG. And then obviously you click here, save it into your files, etc. So once you have all of that, what you want to do is you want to pop into Photoshop, you want to create your new project. So you want to make it the same size that you saved that. So we had 1920 by 1080 at 300 dpi we're gonna create and then we're gonna place the text that we rendered so i'm gonna use the text that i had in my first render i'm gonna place that right there there we go so now you have the text it is in um next step we're gonna just put this on a black background so it's easier to look at there we go. So the next step is to start working at this sort of flame effect that we have. So let me pull up a reference of what I had last time so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, so essentially um, the first step is to, we're gonna duplicate this layer with Control J. Move it, we're gonna move it to the center, sorry. So to center something, what you can do is click Control A. This will select the whole layer then move to the uh, to the move tool and then click these align horizontal align vertical and this will make sure that everything is centered All right and next what we're going to do is we can hide that other layer we're going to go to filter and go to blur motion blur that we're going to make that angle 90 degrees distance we're going to make it enough so that it covers the whole screen so now we have these lines based off of the render that we made Next step is to, uh, we can, we're going to rasterize this because we're working with smart layer, but it's annoying to have to go back and forth. We're going to duplicate these a ton, so control J, and then we can select them all by holding shift, top and bottom, it'll select everything in between, then click control E, merges it. And we're going to do it enough so that we get a visible, you know, view. Then what we can do is we're going to move this down a bit we're going to select this one and we're going to move it up so it's at the very bottom part of the lowest letter next step is to grab your eraser give yourself a uh, hardness of zero percent and your size uh small enough so you're able to fit in the fit in the nooks and crannies you're just going to go through and you're going to erase everything below the bottom letter so this will make it look like it ends where it should and then for stuff like these 
you don't have to worry about it, but you can sort of like give yourself a lower opacity, have it like fade out. But in the end product, it won't really be noticeable. So I'm just going to go through and speed this up. All right, so now that we've got this all figured out, the next step is to have it sort of fade out. So there's two ways you could really um, do this, but the simpler way is just to head into gradient. Well, actually, no. The, the simpler way is to really just use the eraser tool once again. Uh, this will look more natural as well. Set the hardness to 0%. Make the size big enough so that you can really have an effect that's say around 600 is fine. And then set the opacity down to like 20%. And then what you can do is like you can use this like a brush. And so 20 is a bit low actually. Jeez, was the cops out. And then you can go through clicking each time you do a stroke to sort of have this falling out effect which is exactly what we need so now we've got that done next what we want to do is we want to add sort of movement to this because now it feels like it's falling straight down there's no we just want a sort of falling slash fire effect to it right so we can go to filter distort wave and then we're going to set the wave length to be around 300 and amplitude around half of that so 150 works number generators one so that was actually way too big. I uh, completely <laughs> overestimated that. Set the amplitude way down to like 50. And then the wavelength down to like 250. So actually this worked out pretty well. But what you can tell here is that this got distorted a bit. So a few ways to fix this. Obviously um, for the ones that went below, just hit up the eraser tool again. It's no worries. And then what you can do if you're really, if you're really on it, select these chunks, control T, warp tool, which is under that, and then sort of just move it over so that it covers it, right? And you can do this for every single one. But I mean, it's, it, it takes time. And in the end, it won't be noticeable, I promise. <laughs> So we're just going to skip that. Next things in order. We can duplicate this layer because we are going to give these sort of on fire effects. So we're duplicating the original text. We're going to rasterize it and we're going to use something called the smudge tool, which is going to become your best friend because you can make so much cool shit with it. So if you take a normal brush, with hardness is zero. And you make it around the size of a letter. I'm going to give it a strength of around 76. If you do this, what you can do is you can literally, in the name, just smudge it out. And so, that is what we're going to do. We're going to follow the shape of the wave that we created earlier. And we're just going to click and drag. It's as simple as that. And so, make sure that you duplicate it because you're not, you still want the original render there for later, right? that's still legible because we're going to use a cool blend mode so it can make it look cool. I'm just going to click and drag. That's good enough. And then what I like doing now is this is where you can have a cool fire flame so you can sort of split it up like this. You want to do long strokes. Maybe use a lower strength. The lower the strength the more natural look. You can really focus on stuff. But you can really just have your fun now because I mean, it's art, you know, do what you think will look cool. And so now we have this sort of fallen apart text. I'm actually just going to mess with it a bit more because I think this looks a bit too normal. So now we have that going on, which I think looks much cooler. So the next step is to add a bit of color to this because this feels all a bit bland. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a basic color now only so that we can use the hue adjustment later. So this gradient in reality doesn't matter as long as it's a set of colors. So I'm just going to click one of my preset gradients. 
pre pre saved gradients. I can talk. I'm gonna set this. So this already looks pretty cool, in my opinion. But what we want is that we don't want it to affect the background layer. So how can we fix that? Well, we can use a clipping mask. But the issue is this will only clip to one layer. So what you can do is select all your layers of text or things that you've affected. Hit the top one. Hit the bottom one. While holding Shift, I'll select everything in between as well. Then hit Control G. I'll put everything in a group. Then, if you hold Alt in between both layers, then click. It'll clip it onto the layers that you want to select. So now we've got this cool little on fire text effect that we got going on with the color and the waves, etc., which is perfect. Next thing is what we want to do is that original layer that I told you to save. You're going to want to put it on top, and then you're going to want to click scroll down all the way to difference and actually it looks pretty good there as well but what that will do is that it will essentially invert the colors so that it fits in pretty well if you ask me honestly any of these right here on from difference to divide they all bring a different effect other than exclusion but they all they all have a cool effect i i think the difference one looks nice um and we actually are going to put it on top because i think it looks cool it makes it a bit more legible. We are going to reduce the opacity of that a bit. So, at this step, in terms of just the text design and the fire and all that, I could really be done. I could add more, we could add the, the texture and everything later. But in terms of design, I could really be done. But, there's a few more things in terms of color that I personally like to do that I think makes this look a lot cooler. Um, so we are going to go forward with that, and that is to have a bit more of a random color type feel, right? So, what we can do is that you can select your brush here, and we're just going to select a normal hard round brush. And then we're going to select some colors at the right side here that we think would work well together. So you can just do rainbow, which I think looks pretty cool, but I want to work with a sort of... How can I put this? With a sort of red color scheme but it'll still use other colors. So basically, I'm just gonna work from left to right, and I'm gonna start picking some colors that I think will work well together. So, red and purple will look nice, and then some greens will look good. Bit of an orange, perhaps. There you go. Um, maybe a sign. Okay, so I think that looks pretty neat. Next, we're going to make sure that that covers the whole text. If you're on a new version of Photoshop, the newer ones, um, you don't need to hold shift to skew, but now you do, so you can always change the different properties, which I think is weird that they changed it, but I suppose it makes sense. Then what you're going to want to do is, well, actually, this will be easier if you have it cover the whole screen. I'll show you why later. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to hold, you're going to clip it onto the layer. So you're going to want to hold Alt as a in between both layers, and then click. And then, as you can see, it covers it. But obviously, it doesn't cover it like we want it to look like. You can't really read the text. It's not what we want. So once we change that to Hue, we can read this more. But it doesn't have that cool random text effect that we're still going for yet. So what we do next is that we head to Filter. Then we had to liquefy. So liquefy works similarly to smudge, but it's not exactly the same. Now the reason why I told you guys to make this so big is because when we go into this filter here, into liquefy, you're able to mess around with it much more easily without creating these big awkward gaps. So honestly, I would just start off by removing these awkward spaces because they become very annoying later on. Then I'm going to set a pretty high pressure, it's a somewhat fitting size and I'm just gonna go ham with it. I'm just gonna make sure that all the colors are mixed and I get all of them included. So we're gonna red, some of blue. I'm just gonna mix it to the best of my abilities. Once I feel like I've got a good mix, perhaps we'll use a smaller brush size so we can get more of more of a mix, right? Once I feel like I've got a good mix, even though this is way too much green. But you know what? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to click OK. And so now we've got a much better mix. And now we can reduce this so we can get more detail in. 
Then what we can do is we can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, give it enough of a blur so that you can tell that they're not mixed, but they still look cool if that makes sense. So I think this looks fine. Next step to make this look even more natural is head on over to the smudge tool again. And then over the liquify tool, I'm just going to click and drag over the path of each letter again. What this will do is it'll make it, it'll make the colors work with the flame as well, if that makes sense. So we're just going to do a few runs. If you don't have a lot of color, that's fine. So now that we've got that happening, we at, oops, did I delete the green? Okay. So we actually don't need the gradient map. I guess I did when I first made it, but we don't. Um, what you can do instead of setting this onto hue is you can set this to overlay. This will get much better effect of what we're going for actually. And there's a few color modes that will have different, or blend modes that will have different effects. Um, I feel like overlay works best. Possibly vivid light works pretty well too. But you know, whatever works with you. So we're going to stick with Vivid Light. That turned out pretty nice, actually. So now that we've got a random color jumble inside the text, which is what we were really going for, looks cool. We can actually move this right here, the divide one. It doesn't, it shows up well in difference. But if you move it over the text, you get sort of a metallic silver look. So there's, it's just, it depends on where you place what at what step. Um, Photoshop's interesting like that. If you subtract here, it'll give us sort of like a ghost effect. Now this will have more of a color. It's, it's however you figure it out. Um, but next what we're going to move on to is we're going to add some glow, we're going to add some texture, we're going to have some noise. It'll look much better than this. Because this looks cool, but it, it feels too clean, right? So the next step to add glow, how I like to add glow is I like to select the highlights and then blur it. So what we're gonna do to select all the highlights, we're just gonna group this. Uh, so select both layers, Control J, or Control G, I'm sorry, and then Control J to duplicate it, and then Control E will merge everything in the group into one layer. So once you're at this step, now you can't move any of these layers around that you had previously here, which is why you wanna duplicate it and then hide it. But just keep that in mind when you're at this part. This is called working destructively. It's a bad habit, but sometimes it's just so much faster when it doesn't really matter for a project like this, for example, you can just go ahead, you know. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to click select color range, and this will allow me to pick specific colors. So for example, right now, if you can see in that preview box, I can be picking the purples, or I can be picking the greens, have some yellows, or all the dark colors. But what we're going to do is we're going to select the brightest part, we can find so the whites like this. Turn the fuzziness up to what we feel is picking out the whites pretty well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select a tool that has the marquee selection. So any of these first, the second, third, and fourth, I think. Right click and then layer via copy. So what this did is that we now have all these layers, um, all the highlights of the layer in a separate copy. So what we can do now, we can duplicate this a few times so we can make sure that we have it nice and bright for when we blur it. So the next step to blurring it would be to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And so I do these in separate increments. So the first one I start out with around four pixels to eight pixels. I bring down the opacity and then I duplicate it, control J, filter, Gaussian. And then I work one more increment in 16 for that one, 16 pixels. Adjust the opacity to OSC fit. Once again, duplicate, go back to Gaussian Blur. This one make a bit bigger, 36 pixels. I think the opacity is fine. Now once again, Control J, Blur. This one to make rather big. There we go. So now it's really, it's really picking it up. So you can see a before and after. This is before the blur. This is after the blur. So it makes it feel like the text really is working with the light. And so 
You can mess around with different blend styles or make the blur look different. For example, pin light has a cool effect. Um, these work differently. I'm honestly not too sure how they all work, but they do have their own tricks. So yeah. Um, the next step, if you may have noticed an example, is that each letter sort of has their own type of how can I say it? highlight to it. So the, it's pretty easy to do that actually. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that everything is in one layer. Don't actually need the blur layer for this part. I'm gonna duplicate our original layers without the blur layers. I put it all in the group. I'm gonna filter. I go filter gallery, and then we're gonna under stylize. We're gonna click glowing edges. So what this will do is, well, like the title says, it'll give everything a glowing edge, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to reduce the edge width a bit. Smoothest, you want to try to keep it down at 1. And then in terms of edge brightness, 12 will work fine. So now we have this cool, somewhat freaky type of effect going on. But to make it look normal fit with your other one, you're going to click the blend style. Then you're going to go down to overlay. Um, obviously, as I said, different blend modes are different things, but I think overlay works best for this. And then you're going to reduce the opacity to however you see fit. So now we've got these cool little highlights around the edges, which I think adds a lot. Next step is we're also going to make every line seem a bit more defined. Uh, there's a quick way to do that. So all the edges, we can do Control J with our original layer again, bring it up. Like filter, oops, make sure they're selected, filter, and then go to other and then click high pass. And so what this does is that it will start, everything will be sort of gray at first, but as you go further to the right, it'll add some halos and sort of define the edges a bit more. So you wanna move to the right just enough so that the edges are defined, but you don't have too many halos, they're not too blurred. So I'm gonna do one pixel, that's fine. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set that blend mode to overlay. And so the difference is rather small, but it's there. Everything is just a tad bit more sharp. So now that we've got all that, this is where, honestly, I think the fun part comes in. Uh, you can just start making this look really, how do I say this, vintage type deal. So like a grunge aesthetic. Uh, it's going to look cool. So turn on your blur layer. We're going to merge everything together again. So, Control G. I wish that Windows sound would go away. Control J, Control E. Every shortcut. I don't know why it's doing that. So, we've got everything in one layer. And now, there's a little trick for you. If you go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter, you will essentially have all of what is Adobe Lightroom inside of Photoshop. Oh, and so we've actually hit a little issue. So, notice when we went there, First of all, we didn't have the black because we didn't put that in that layer, which I do want. So we actually are going to include that. Oops. We're going to merge them with Control E. But the next thing that we notice is that if I do Control T right now, notice how everything up here is still there. And that's because we didn't fully erase those lines from the start. So to get rid of an issue like that, if you do Control A and then Control J, what they'll do is they'll select everything in the box that you're working on. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if you duplicate it, it'll only duplicate what's in the box. So <clears throat> now that we have this, if I do control, oops, wrong one. <laughs> if I do control T again, it's cut off where we want it to. So back to filter, camera raw filter. And now we've got everything that we want. So personally, um, there's not much that I'm going to change. I am going to do a few things though. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head into the effects and I'm gonna add some grain. So you can do this through the noise um, tab under the filter tab over there, but it doesn't work nearly as well because you have these three options that help you make it look much cooler. So the grain itself, I don't want it to go really beyond 40 because at that point it makes it look like you're sort of losing quality. This goes definitely the same with the size. So up to around 30, it looks cool. But then if you go beyond that, it looks sort of blurry and it's just hard to look at, right? So I'm going to limit that to around 30. The roughness you can go sort of ham with. It's obviously just how rough it looks. I'm going to keep it around 72. I'm going to grain. I'm going to zoom out to see how it looks. 
We're on a 31. Oops. So. Now we have a sort of grain effect going on. Um, we can do as well as, it didn't work as well as I thought in Lightroom, but if you click adjustments tab, if you can't find this under windows and go to curves from here, we can raise the darks to be a bit more gray, which is what I wanted to do. So it's a bit too much. If you ask me, but it's all about fine touches, you know? There we go. I like that. So now that we have that, we can start adding cool textures on top. So if I open a new tab for Chrome here, we can look up dust texture. Um, and then we can start scrolling through these. And you want one, not too much detail, but it'll still look Cool. It's not really a way to describe it, what I want, but um, scratches look cool as well. It's, you know, <laughs> it's, your, your eye picks it up. So this one will look fine, actually. Now we're going to go back here, put it on top, control T, move it up while holding alt, while keep it centered, set to over, no, screen, sorry. Then we'll remove all the darks, and then we can just lower that opacity pretty low, actually. So that looks alright. Um, possibly another one. This one's fine. Paste that in. Set it to screen. Actually, I think color dots work better. Nope, I'm mistaken. And then lower that opacity as you see fit. So, then we have a sort of scratched up filtered effect, and you can actually do this before you apply the noise, um, so that gets the noise as well, whichever way you do it, I think it looks cool, it gives a sort of like a green old static TV filter onto the falling text, which I think looks alright. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, there was one more thing that I did, which I will show you guys right now, it's very easy to do. What I did is I went around, randomly selected bits like this, the text, went to filter, uh, went to pixelate, went to mosaic, and just gave it a random amount of blur. And it creates a cool little like glitch effect. I think it looks neat. You can add it if you want, you can add it if you don't want to. Um, but that's all up to personal preference. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. Um, if you liked it, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And I am um, streaming on Twitch now. So if you guys want to hop in when I'm streaming and want to know when I'm streaming, the link will be in the description and you guys can give me a follow there. So thanks everyone for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.